It is 6.30 on July 21st. Welcome to WordPress Toronto, a virtual edition of the Let's Fix Your WordPress website group. Um, we are expecting about 40 people to today's meeting, but you should know that uh, some people actually come a little bit late. Um, so I'm going to wait until uh, uh, a few more people join before I announce the uh, various uh, uh, sponsors and things like that. Well, maybe we'll do all sponsors around an hour into the event. So we have a chance for everybody to join. We, we do record this meeting uh, and uh, we post it on WP Toronto website uh, as well as well as a, uh, um, a transcript sometimes is made available by Robin. I don't know if he's joining us today. Um, I know that Dan Stramer, who's usually here with me, is not going to be able to join. He, he messaged me earlier today. Uh, he's uh, one of our experts here, so I don't think he'll be able to. And it's kind of mid-July anyway, so even though I have 40 people RSVP, I'm not necessarily uh, expecting that many. I, I had, I, it looks like I had nine people on a wait list as well, and so I didn't actually think I had a wait list, but okay. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick, um, I'm gonna take a quick uh, attendance here. Let me see if I can. Uh, where is Jim joining? Let me go ahead and see if I can start doing some attendance. Um, a few more people are joining now. So let's see here. I'm going to uh, check in uh, Fern. I'm just going to look based on your name of uh, people that are registered for the meetup. I saw Yolanda join. Victoria. Victoria, what's your meetup uh, handle? Do you remember? Where would I look for that? Uh, it would be like in the, in the, in the check-in list. I, I have a whole, I have about 35 people here. So. Well, my email is vs at victoriastasiak.ca. Does that help you? Mm, is, they have like, let me see if there's a picture of you. Do you have a picture of yourself on? Yeah, the... there I am. I'm like, so I have blonde hair and I got a little red earring. Okay. Let me just see here. Uh, this is my, this is, I'm sharing my screen. This is my list of people that are. Yeah. I usually like to take it. I like to take attendance. I like to take attendance to um, to uh, just just check to see who comes out to the events and stuff like that. Uh, a few more people that joined just now. My my whole name might be my 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 handle Victoria Stasiak. Yeah, I looked under Victoria, but I didn't see it. Hmm, weird. Yeah, you did our RSVP though, right? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. I got a couple invites and got a link to the Zoom thing. Okay. Which Which you the the check the 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 Other A's, H A A. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Oh, there's Robin. That's cool. Doing seconds if you guys are joining here. Hello, hello. Hey, Robin. Oh, Paul Warner, let's see. <laughs> yeah, some background noise here. <coughs> trying to see who that is. Mm, looks like, it's, looks like uh, it's been fixed. Okay, let's see who else do we have here. Paul. Hey, Paul. Okay. P.S. IPS, can you tell us what your handle is on Meetup so I can check? No, it? I'm just watching out of my living room. What's up? Um, okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll get going here. Um, uh, usually, no, I normally share my screen and uh, uh, I've checked in. I think everybody that I can check in so far. And we'll, uh, oh, one more person. Let me check Bazaar in. Okay. 
<laughs> so well, normally what we do in this meetup is we start going by looking at the posts that have been made on the um, meetup group. Okay. Yes, it's par. Okay, that's fine. Let me check you in. Candice. Hello. Hi, Candice. Um, Candice, what's your, did you uh, uh, sign up under under Meetup? Yep. Uh, what's your handle? Do you know. For Meetup. Yeah. It should be sweet candy. Let me just check the email. One second. Just a sweet, 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 sweet. Don't have that. Maybe I checked. Your oh, name. I'm showing under my other thing, which is Lillian. Do you see that? Lillian's. It, it should be under. There it is. Lillian laid low. You passed it. Oh. Right there. Lillian. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's Jock. Okay. I was just wondering if Jock is going to make it. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Hazal, I think I got you. I think I did already. Yep. I think I did. Great. We're having a nice little group join us here today. Great. We have 17 people in. All right. Uh, Bay, uh, I don't think I've got you. Hi, it's B. B, okay. What's your handle on LinkedIn or on Meetup? It's B. I Just keep B? it. Yep. I uh, don't see it here. I don't see it either, but I am on. I even posted a question on the okay. comments. That's cool. Um, let's. I'll, we'll see it from there, and I can check you in from there. Okay. So we'll get going then. It looks like uh, people have joined. They're going to join. So. Uh, Let's see here. Welcome everybody again. I was just doing some roll call here. Uh, let me just take a look at the comments. So we're going to start. Here we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So Yolanda actually, I believe, has the first one. That's the oldest one here. Um, let's see here. So Yolanda, hi, how are you? Uh, I'm going to read your comment and then we'll ask you to uh, expound on it a little bit. Sounds like you're starting a website for yourself and you've been working on it for about a month. That's great. Uh, are you uh, are you setting up other websites for other customers? Is that what you're doing? Um, I will be. Um, the issue, yeah, the issue that I was having with this one was with the WooCommerce plugin. Um, integration i guess with the site and i never really worked with woo before so i thought okay maybe it's me but i was trying to get it to work a certain way and a friend of mine went in and she organized it but i am still curious if it can work another way so <laughs> once you, you take a look at it you can see it all right is this the website here yolanda douglas uh yes yolanda douglas .com. okay um so um all the pages are not done by the way just in case okay so you've got a shopping cart here and you've got a checkout link at the top which are woocommerce and right. where, where 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 do you have woocommerce oh is this it right here is this your woocommerce um yeah yeah mm -hmm. so once you click any of these buttons right mm -hmm. um i'm curious um on other sites um even this like this is this is hard to to organized um I, I don't even know how how can you get it so that it skips this page and goes directly into um the payment mode. uh directly to the payment system well you normally the way woo works is you have a product here and then you have you have to add it to your cart first and then okay. and then once you do that then this is a standard setup and then when you view cart then you can check out from here Okay, so you cannot skip that section. Um, well, there there probably is a way, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, mm -hmm. no, that's that's normally the uh, that's normally the the workflow for Woo's because it's a shopping cart, right? Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. a shopping cart normally has like you picking one or more items. Um, so you would want instead of instead of going to the cart, you want to go directly to which page? To the checkout page? To the checkout page, right? And and I mean, to me, the the cart and the checkout page look the same. <laughs> so maybe I'm wrong here. Well, it's not definitely. Okay. Not. What is the difference? Well, a checkout page is the page, the final page you go after you visit your cart or when you go to the check or when you go to the slash checkout uh, link, whereas the cart is like your shopping cart of items that you can, uh, you can, you can add quantity and modify and add coupons. Exactly. And stuff, right. Right. So we can't skip this middle or possibly. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say can't to anything. I just don't yeah. know. I don't know exactly how does anybody know in Wu how you can, instead of going to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, let's see, I guess, Carts, I guess to the card, just when you click add to, uh, basically this is add to card. It's called sign up now instead. How do you switch directly to the, uh, checkout? Anybody know how to do that? I'm not really sure. There is a checkout you. link, uh, Alex and bar and the, just with the mouse is hovering. Yeah. What it happens there. Well, this is, this is actually the checkout. So you, so you, so Yolanda wants it when you, when you, um, oh, this is a different, oh, uh, yeah, this is a different check. I think that. that's the last, that's the last step, right? This one here. Uh, but, the, but the product has been selected, right? Yeah. So it's in the cart. Right. And so normally you can go to the cart from anywhere in a site, that is to say, the idea being that the card is like suspense, right? It will hold the details that you put in so far mm-hmm. so that you can continue shopping. And then when you're ready to check out, then that's when you finalize what's in the cart. So okay. Okay. I'm, so not sure what the, I'm not sure what the, what the request is because you have to have something in the cart in order to check out. It may be possible to have a link which says, in effect, choose this item and go directly to the cart all your information must already exist in that account, you know, credit card, shipping address, and so on, because that's also part of the cart process, right? Is making sure you have an account, making sure you have a credit card that's valid, making sure of the, you know, the shipping details and so on. I see. Okay. So where in your workflow here, does that, those steps occur? Because normally they occur after you select the product and the product then goes into the cart. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to empty my card. So like Yolanda wants it. So when you go to sign up now, she wants to go to, instead of adding it, this is actually adding to a cart. The sign up now actually add to a cart. What she wants is to add it to the cart and go directly to the checkout item. And what right. you want to do but, is you want to go into where, your where do, WooCommerce settings. Where do the, the, the components, the, not the nine out of 10 items that are required for the cart come from? Because the product itself is just one item. As I just mentioned, credit card shipping information, your name and address. That would be here. Where are they all they coming from? Well, that would be on the checkout page, right? Right. Well, if you want to no, go, if you want to go directly page. to the checkout. Last step. So, sorry, go ahead. Who is that? Who is that speaking? Uh, that's Heather speaking. Hey, Heather. Uh, she wants to directly go to the checkout right after adding the product to the cart, right? So, yeah. mm-hmm. why don't you go to WooCommerce settings and under the products tab. Um, check mark the add to cart behavior to redirect to the cart page after a successful addition. Okay. Um, well, that's good. Um, uh, do you, Yolanda, do you want to share your screen and you can log in and navigate to it? Uh, right. I was just going to, I was just pulling the password actually. I, it's probably best if you do it. Um, oh. I don't mind giving you the, uh, uh, well, okay. Not really safe. <laughs> I can change it. That's the thing, right? I can change it after. Okay, well, why don't you, why don't you, here, I'm going to send you a, a private message on here. And then you can, uh, <coughs> and then I will, I will, uh, I will stop, I'll log in and then, yeah, okay. So I, I sent you a message, Yolanda, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, navigate to your W admin, and then I'm going to, I'm going to um, stop sharing for now. I think I kind of sent it to you directly, too. And you can just you can just chat. You just can type just it in. Send it to me via chat. Yeah. Um, and the, you know how to bring up the chat the Zoom chat window. There you go. Okay. Well, is that it, the login or the password? That's the admin. The, lo- um, the password oh. I'm going to give to you now. Okay. 
is it admin is the username? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, let me just see if we're logged in successfully and then if we have, no, that's not correct. Oh, there it is, okay. Sorry. Admin is a username and then- That's right. That's right, okay. Trying again, nope, that's not, I didn't get that right. I just copied and pasted the uh, the second. Uh, are you sure admin is a username? Uh, Maybe you can provide me an email address. That is that is the admin. Uh, Make sure there's no space at the end. What's that? Make sure there's no space at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. I copied, I copied the password directly from chat. Let me see. Uh, check it. Yeah, that's that's what it is. <laughs> I'm trying to log in myself. Yeah, if you log in yourself, like you can, uh, you can share the screen on your computer. Okay. So it's probably better anyway, so you can navigate to it. Okay. Not a good day to have wiped or cleared my catch. While you're doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring. I have a website that has um, WooCommerce on on here. I'm gonna navigate to the screen um, that Heather uh, recommended here in WooCommerce. Uh, actually, where do I have? Oh. I have WooCommerce actually on this site. I don't. I forgot. I don't have it on this site actually. Um, let's see here. I'm going to log in and then share my screen. I'm going to, this looks like a standard, a standard setting. Um, here, I'll share my screen. This is what Heather shared. Um, so when you're logged into, um, oh, I know what that person is doing. Okay. When you're logged into um, uh, uh, your dashboard, there should be a WooCommerce option here. Mm -hmm. And you go under settings, WooCommerce settings. And under the products tab, which is here, Heather says there's a check mark, redirect to the cart after successful addition in add to cart. So here it is right here. So add to cart behavior, redirect to the cart page after successful addition. So basically what this does will, will take you to the shopping cart and I think at that point you can click checkout. Oh, okay. Sorry. So um, I have it here. So after you're in WooCommerce, you go to settings. You want to share your screen? Uh, yeah. It was saying I can't do that while you're sharing, but okay, I stopped sharing. Okay. By the way, people that don't know WooCommerce, it's so. One of the most popular e-commerce systems for WordPress. Can yep. So click it? on products. Products here. Oh. I don't know why it's so slow all of a sudden. And then check the, um, scroll down a bit and check the um, add to cart behavior. Check the redirect to the cart page after successful addition. Here. Yep. And click save and then that's that's basically it <laughs> okay well i mean let's just take a look and see you always want to you always want to test it go, go to your website and then let's take a look and see if um how it works there are these standard pages like checkout page shopping cart all your product pages those, those are all managed by um Sign up, and then, yeah, it's still sending me the same. It's the same, right? Like it's two step pro process or three step. That actually is the that is the shopping cart page. Yeah, it's a little slightly different actually. This is not. This is the different page. This is well. This is your shopping cart, and then at the bottom you have like a proceed to checkout. Yeah. Oh. 
that, that that one actually added it to the card, and then you had to switch you the card here. To here, you wanted you wanted to go directly to the checkout page. I don't know if there's an option for that. Right. Okay. Okay. There there might be a way to do it, but it, uh, but uh, it'll probably be a, a non-standard setting for WooCommerce. Right. Well, actually, Alex, just... Alex, I I think oh. that you need to clarify that checkout can mean a multi-page process. Mm -hmm as I mentioned before, or it could be all put together in one page. But if the person hasn't reg hasn't signed in with an account, how can you go to a checkout page, which is the last step in the process, click the button and I go home? Is, does WooCommerce have a single page which has all of the information required for the transaction uh, available? Because that's the page, quote unquote, in the singular, that is, is the target, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah not the third page or the second page or the first page of the four or three or five page process. Right, right. It makes sense, like what you're saying. Totally so when you when you say check out, you have to be clear, I want to go to a checkout page where everything occurs already or everything occurs on the one page and this, you know, so you can go through it in that fashion. But you have to collect the information to do the transaction at some point. Absolutely. Right. And if you just click a button and say subscribe or buy, where is that information going to come from? I was thinking um, there, there are some times that you're on a site and you're making a purchase. And when you click on purchase, it brings you right to the option. So in other words, um, and I haven't, and I'm just checking out as a guest. So like PayPal or say PayPal at the bottom or credit card, and then it gives you that list. So I thought there was a way maybe to that right, point. But in order to use a credit, if you're using credit cards, presumably, or PayPal, you have to have an address and, and, and the details in the case of the credit card, um, there's at least what, four or five pieces of information. And so right, what I'm not clear about is when is that information going to be provided? Is it before the person clicks to subscribe? Maybe they already have an account, but if they don't have an account, I don't see how you can reach the last step of a process without going through the intermediate steps to get there? Well, the credit card information in this case would be added right here, right? Which is the last step. Right. But all you, when you say check out, though, all you're saying is put everything that's required to check out on one page and uh -huh. go to that page, okay? But that's what the checkout process normally is. But if this plugin spreads it out over four pages, that's what you have to work with. Okay. Um, the, 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 it's highly configurable. So like on my site that I was showing you the settings for it, you do add to the cart like on yours. And then when you check out, so it's just like what you have on, that's the standard WooCommerce flow. Okay. You have a, you have a product, you add it to your uh, shopping cart. And then in this case, it shows you the shopping cart after you add it. And then, and then there's a, and then from there you can proceed to check out. I so see. I want to suggest the following, like, um, WooCommerce is, is a really complex plugin. It's probably one of the most complex plugin with lots of options. The reality is that it is possible to do what you want to do. I'm sure some way, somehow that you can basically bypass the cart and go directly to checkout. There might be a, a plugin or extension or some kind of configuration change that I'm not aware of, but seemingly it's possible because the checkout page, like here's, here's my checkout page. Um, okay. like my checkout page has billing, shipping, has the so summary of the order that was selected, has some options that we configured with shipping and the credit card or pay or various payment option and place order. So this is the check, this is our checkout page, right? But when I have an item that I select on, this is also WooCommerce. So when I have an item that I select, for example, here, and I want to add it to a cart, let's say I want to add four of these to a cart, I also go directly to the cart and it shows me how many, and it updates if I already have this on here and adds one. So it's very, it's just like yours. It, there, I don't go directly to the checkout because I have, because there's the, 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 the natural flow is that there is a shopping cart in between where you get to confirm basically what it is that you're gonna buy. You wanna go to here directly. You wanna bypass the screen, which in theory should be possible because what you're saying is, look, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna look at a cart. I have an item. I'm gonna to proceed to this checkout and I'm gonna provide all information. If I'm logged in, it'll pre-fill my information because I do have a profile. So it pre-fills my, my information from my, from my login. If I'm not logged in, then you just start providing information. It'll probably create an account in the back end after you log out and collect all this information. So 
the question is, well, I mean, the, you know, with, with anything related to, I mean, you always have to Google first, right? Like, like Yolanda, if you're not used to Googling. Um, <laughs> um, oh yeah, here, like Heather shared a link here, direct WooCommerce direct checkout. Well, look at that. Um, oh. There you go. There's a, there's a plugin for this. Uh, so it allows oh, us to actually you're able to simplify the checkout process by skipping the shopping cart. So this was, I was going to start Googling to find out like, what is the, is there some documentation? Is there a, um, is there a, uh, and then, so this is actually um, some, some functionality that gives you a configuration option. Okay. Which okay. is probably, yeah, this looks like has the ability to kind of reconfigure stuff without coding in WooCommerce to make it a little bit more speedier. Here's a one page checkout. So yeah, there's some really good. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So I will, I'll definitely read up on that. I tried to find it, but I think um, I was not. Um, I didn't have the tools as far because, as far as I was concerned, the checkout and the the, the cart were pretty similar to me. So you no, know, they're different. They're, they're, have the lingo, they're right? Def they're definitely. You know how they're different. You got you definitely like you. How much documentation have you read about WooCommerce before you installed and started using it? Oh, I had didn't read before I installed it, but I read a few things on how to set it up. Um, but did you read about the standard pages that exist in WooCommerce? No, I didn't read about the. Yeah. So there's a ton of documentation on this yeah. product, and I would highly recommend you really give it a good read to understand okay. like all the things that are happening. Because if this is a really complex plugin, there's a lot of options, and so um, I believe there is a, a configuration page here that specifies what's the shop page. It specifies, let's see here. Um, I remember seeing a page that specifies like exactly what are the, the check, what's the checkout page, what's the cart page and what's the product page. Uh, okay. I remember seeing that somewhere in here. Um, yeah, okay. there, there, I, I will, I'll take a look there's at There's some it. docs, but like Heather, how did you actually, um, how did you actually find that plugin? Can you, can you tell us what you went about, how you went about, um, I just, did a, I, just, I just did a search on it. Yeah, so what did you search? I just searched uh, WooCommerce direct checkout. Okay, and you happen to find a, con a plugin that's called exactly that almost. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that's that's good. So this is a fair, like, it's something to try. You know, these are, these are mm -hmm. lots of plugins. Um, B, you wanted to, you asked me, can you stay on that screen before moving on, please? Which screen did you want me to look at, yes. B? Uh, the, um... On your side, yeah, where you have the checkout, I think the payment method. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I think my question is related to that. Oh, okay. Uh, the payment methods for Woo. Um, well, let's take yes. a look at my cart. Um, here's my shopping cart, and so um, okay. how yeah. do you can how do you configure these payment methods? Is that what you're asking? Uh, uh, no, our back one. Yes. So my site, um, it's a it's a small site. I'm starting to sell masks yeah. i want to only use paypal okay but it keeps asking for credit card debit card and paypal okay well that's that's configured in uh again that's configured in woocommerce so there's different payment types um under settings this is the um under payments you specify which ones are enabled and what order you want them to appear in i enabled all of them, I think. I only had um, PayPal selected. You don't have. Uh, uh, okay, you you only have PayPal selected. Okay. Yes. Yes. And okay, uh, and then, but then you know PayPal also allows you to se specify. Um, let's see here. They allow you to specify. I believe. Uh, this is oh, this is PayPal standard. Yeah. Do you have a PayPal standard selected? Yes. Uh, let me show you my site. It's very, um, it's at the beginning development stage. It's not okay. completely done yet. You want to share your screen, B? Oh, I'm not logged in. Oh. Um, well, I can, okay, I can share it. I'll just show you on the site itself what it looks like. Uh, that doesn't seem to be, doesn't, hotkey doesn't seem to be working. 
Uh, the site is www. kit. No, sorry, dot kit. dot com. So you have a add to card here. Yes. And then, yeah, this is, this is, these are both PayPal actually, because the reason why there's a PayPal checkout is with a PayPal account. And this is what you, what you, what you click to select a credit card on PayPal. Mm -hmm. They're both PayPal. This is PayPal checkout where you log in with your PayPal account and pay. Whereas this is, this is using PayPal to use a credit card to check out. Yeah, so how do I remove when you go add to cat or uh, sorry, add to card, you have proceed with checkout PayPal and then on at the bottom you have debit or credit. So when you click on that uh, how do you remove I, which one? The I wanna sorry, I wanted to remove the debit or credit one. I'm not sure if that's possible, actually. Because PayPal when you use PayPal there's always a way to check out with debit or credit. You only, you only want PayPal to be logged logged in with Alex. It may be a little confusing that you're talking about correctly that the credit card reference here or debit card is with respect to PayPal, not the, the the vendor receiving payment via credit card. So you can fund your PayPal with a credit card or a debit card, etc. And so that's why you can't turn it off. Yeah, like basically what they're saying here is it's going to use PayPal to check out, but they're going to fund. The purchase with a debit or credit card that's passed on to PayPal. Right. I'm not sure if there's a way to turn off this. So somebody... if, if I wanted to only use PayPal. Um, yes, but this is not the question though. The credit card on the PayPal page is not a credit card to pay for the transaction, but to pay PayPal. Like this, I don't think B understands that. PayPal checkout is basically a way to log in with your PayPal account. Yes. And then, and here, basically this right here, pay with credit visa, debit card, this one here, they're showing, they're giving you a shortcut so you can fill that out right here. Because oh, I'm sorry, credit, Alex, with PayPal, uh, you can use your credit card to then make the payment on PayPal mm -hmm. as if like why you don't use the credit card directly, I don't know. But I mean, that's the option, right? So that right. PayPal says, if you don't have the funds, we'll go to your credit card. Right. Because if you took if you took off this option, then people would have to log in with a PayPal account. They that's wouldn't be I able want. to. You no, no, they, I do they want would that. be able to log into PayPal, but it wouldn't have anything in it necessarily. Or you, or, it would have your account information. So but what if they don't have a pay, But what if they don't have a PayPal account? Then how are they going to... If you don't have a PayPal account, it gives you the option to enter your credit card. Oh, now, okay. what I, oh from here. So yeah, right, so right here, this reason, one here, this yeah. one. So the reason why uh, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, yeah, sorry. The reason why I don't want to process any payment on my there you go. I don't want to process any payment on my side because it's not secure. It's not secure. I don't want to pay for an SSL secure um, certificate. So I want the people, I want some, when the client clicks on checkout, I want them to be redirected to PayPal, make their payments, and then after the payment is completed, they are redirected back to the site. That's, I use it all the time on different sites. Let's see here. Um... I don't know. I don't know if there's a way. Anybody know if there's a way to turn this off? I, 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 I mean, I, on my payments, let's see here. On my chat, let me just look at my, what, what do I have here configured? I can kind of replicate. I don't remember how this is actually on my site here. <clears throat> I actually want, I like that option. And by the way, you should definitely have an SSL certificate on a e-commerce site. That's not even yeah. like a, that's not even an option. You're not, you're not serious about e-commerce if you don't have SSL. Because what you're expecting people to pass credit card information in the clear between your site and their browser? It wouldn't go to my browser. When it's, when going, you... it's going to your user's browsers, though. You have to have an SSL with any cart site, period. Yeah. 
Like, I, I wouldn't shop on your site if I didn't have an SSL certificate. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> Period. And SSL certificates could be free, right? Like, you don't have to pay for them if your host provides a Let's yeah, Encrypt. Can, yeah, or you can go to Let's Encrypt and get your own. Yeah. Sorry, where? You can go to Let's Encrypt. That, we'll get to that in a second. But let me just take a look and see. Um, the SSL is a must. <laughs> The SSL is the lock right here that tells you it's SSL. So let me just see what I have. I have PayPal here. Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, I have a different op. I have a different logout op set of options here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I have a different set here. But let me just take a look and see. I have. Well, I do have a credit card actually. So I have a, a regular credit card. I think it's just a different layout actually. But I still have a credit card option. I don't know if you noticed that, but I still have a credit card option, right? Yes. I mean, but oh, because I, I, I have Stripe configured. That's right. I have a payment gateway configured. Yes. So I use Stripe as an alternate for direct payment gateway. Yeah. Um, but I think you answered my question. What, what's that? I did? Uh, yes. And I think Heather. Heather yeah. was. Thank you. I, you answered my question as well. Um, I, I wanted to do all that because I didn't want to get the SSL certificate. But if I can get it for free, I'm with GoDaddy. Um, uh -huh. If I'm if I can get it for free, that's I, I'll just have to work on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. I think they also included one of their hosting plans. But um, let's see here. So yeah, I have Stripe as my first option, and then I have PayPal. Um, so I um, I don't know if there's a way to turn off that. Uh, uh that um pay with credit pay credit or debit card um can i comment on that um you can't necessarily turn it off by default in a plug-in you have to go into your paypal account and see if that's even an option oh. because this is all connected to your account mm -hmm. uh, but i don't think by default you can even remove it you really do need to give your users an option the website your website is not working entirely. To pay by credit card. So right? I'm on a webinar to, okay. to fix the problem. I think. Second, I'm gonna mute everybody because somebody just joined. One second, uh, Yolanda, I'm gonna mute you. Uh, go ahead, Yolanda. What were you saying? No, it wasn't me. Oh, was that Heather talking? Uh, you, yeah, you really do need to give your users options. I mean, they, you can't just have PayPal and nothing else. Um, you can't just have, um, you know, debit or credit. I mean, people need to have options to be able to pay as they are comfortable with. And to restrict that, well, people are going to leave your site. I mean, mm -hmm. you're just going to see an increase in bounce rates. They're not going to, you know, feel like, okay, hey, listen, this person really doesn't want my business. So, um, you really do need to give people options. I mean, stick with PayPal, get yourself Stripe. I think those two are really good to go with. Yeah. Um, so, so this, th so to be sure, when you click PayPal checkout, Yolanda, you, you, it's presenting a screen here, and you can log in or pay with credit card or Visa. You see this other option? Well, th this set of fields here, all that is is an alternative that's accessible right here directly from your page that's the, it's the same process so like here they're here but they're exposing it here so that people don't realize oh i don't have a paypal account i'm not going to check out with paypal i'll just do it here but it passes it to paypal anyway this is woocommerce trying to expose the fact that you can pay with a credit card as well so these are all these are both together they're like they're all power they're both powered by paypal Okay. That wasn't my question. This is Yolanda, but um, that was good to know too. Yeah, less encrypt. I, that's where I got mine. Whoever asked that question for free. So. Yeah. So let's encrypt, and then you have to connect with. You have to actually make sure you talk to GoDaddy and how do you install it on your hosting. It yes. could be not, It could be a non-trivial process. So like, okay. you get it. You, you get a certificate, and then you pass it to Let's Encrypt. There's a whole process. GoDaddy may have like a. They don't want, by the way, GoDaddy doesn't want you to get a free certificate, right? No, um, they don't. I know. Yeah. So, so basically by, they don't, they don't advertise let's encrypt. So, but let's see if they have a, uh, um, they probably have, 
Yeah, so here, let's see if this is, uh, yeah, so here's how you install it in your Linux hosting. I think if you have Linux hosting, then probably you can find this. Uh, this is the, um, this is how you, you have, yeah, you have to generate a CSR, go to Let's Encrypt, and then install it in your cPanel. And you have to renew it every 90 days because a free certificate, unless it's managed by your host, has to be renewed every 90 days on a free certificate. So that's a bit of a pain. But some, some hosts uh, automatically renew free certificates. So. I was trying to do as little with GoDaddy as possible because I have over uh, 40 domain names with them and it's, yeah. a pain. <laughs> it's a pain to deal with them. So. Um, right. But your hosting I, is I, there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for for the uh, PayPal process, normally when you click on PayPal, it does take you out like you showed earlier. If I take the site, my site, and I create um, a child theme and I remove, I modify the code and remove that link that shows credit card, would that work? Probably break your site. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to be in your child team anyway. It's powered by, uh, it's powered by WooCommerce, right? Yeah, so just a look. I would leave the PayPal link, but just remove. It's not, the... it's not in your. It's it's powered by pay, it, WooCommerce. It's code embedded into WooCommerce functionality. You're mm -hmm. not going to find a place in your child team that says, "Here's your PayPal link." It's just not going to be that transparent there, and and, and it'll most likely, if you start mucking around with the child team, you most likely will break it unless you're a developer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions on that? No, that's it. Thank you. Um, I think we actually started working with Yolanda site though. Um, do you have any other questions, Yolanda? About uh... no, not at all. That was very helpful. I think not knowing the um, WooCommerce process, I thought that there was probably something wrong with it, and I didn't know again the importance of the distinctions just... between the so that's you've, really some other, you, you've got some other issues there in your formatting you mentioned in your meetup too though because oh did once, i once you yeah because once you started switching switching to these pages you're using a different layout temp either it's a different template or it's something different than or is it or maybe this is the intent maybe you do you maybe no. you want <laughs> no that's not the intent i don't at the moment i haven't gone back i mean boo is just like you said it's complex and I don't know exactly how to format these pages in the template that I've already that I already have like to keep it consistent yeah so, I think you're I think you're overdoing it by using woo all the questions you're asking I think you could you'd be better served with a simple forms plugin is like that right ninja, like ninja forms or gravity forms and have a very simple and a lot of those plugins have a way to connect to a payment system so you oh. can just basically fill out all the information you put in your dollar amount in the form and then check out and you're done without having a, a shopping cart. The form system oh. don't have a shopping cart at all. Okay. I wouldn't, okay. Even use, I wouldn't even use Woo. I would just kind of eliminate it because Woo is for multi-product, like hundred, like tens, hundreds of product type of uh, uh, category of, uh, or very specific kind of pre-built solutions like a jobs manager or something like that. But if all you want is you want to collect some information and a specific amount, you just use a forms builder like Gravity Forms or Ninja Forms. And okay. Get, get the connection to PayPal. A lot of them actually have out of the box PayPal integration, and they and then they have plugins for. So like Ninja Forms is one I like, and then it'll, it'll allow you to do other things like onboarding questionnaires and surveys and all kinds of stuff. It's so like a oh. forms builder like this uh, allows you to create interactive forms. Right. So because because what you're doing is you're, you're asking a bunch of questions and then you're checking out with a certain dollar amount. Right. Right. And so this Ninja, Ninja Forms has um, a bunch of add ons and it's just you're just building a form. And so you that this will get you around the shopping cart. There won't be there won't be a shopping cart. There won't be anything. As soon as you click the subscribe button, you'll go to a form. You fill out the information. The dollar amount will be there and then you check out and you're done. Oh, excellent. OK. Right. Even better, thank you. That's, I mean, that's a different approach, right? Because I think WooCommerce comes with an overhead of all kinds of stuff and it, all this other stuff too, because you've got to worry about the layout, whereas a form is just a short code that goes into a standard page. And so you should, like this is a, I think what's happening is that your product template for each product is using a different template than 
uh, what your regular website's using. Let me just take a look at your about page. Yeah, so you probably want to use, uh, if you still want to use Woo, you probably need to figure out how to get the product page to use the template that the rest of your theme is using. Okay. Right? okay. Which would mean like the same navigation, this kind of header at the top, and then there would be content here at the bottom on the product. So that's more consistent. But right now, when you install when you install Woo, your theme is probably not necessarily Woo compliant. And um, and the same similarly, when you check out, this page is not using your doesn't look like it's using right. your theme at all. It doesn't, right. even have your, it doesn't even have your navigation bar here. Exactly. Your, well, it has your footer, interestingly enough, but not your navigation bar. So oh. similarly, you're kind of losing functionality because these are all pages that are using a particular uh, page template that need to be synced. Anybody right. know anything about that? How to like get those special WooCommerce pages to use the rest of, uh, your regular template? Say that again. Uh, like how do, how do you get like, for example, the shopping cart to use the same template as the rest of the website? Well, if you're using a child theme, it's already using the parent themes, WooCommerce. Are you, I, I guess I got kind of lost in the conversation. What does she want to do? Well, like, well, why is this cart using, it's using the same theme, right? So why is the cart not have a menu bar? To, oh, actually, no, I'm looking at it. There, you're low. Oh, it is there. It's just white on, oh, okay, it's there. It's just white on, it's, it's in it, but it's, but it's somehow mm -hmm. be, becoming transparent as part of this page. I don't know why. So your, your, your navigation is actually there, but it's white text and the background is white. And so it's, and then here your lo, here's your logo kind of scrunched to the top of this. So there's some kind of a layout issue on this theme. So if she changes the background color, um, the white, so for example, if she changes just to gray, gray, a little gray, yeah. um, maybe it would show up. Well, it will. When I'm hovering over them, they're there, yes. right? Yes. See that? It's just, yeah. That would need, I would need to but, but, change but, the padding and everything, right? Like, well, but still, again, this, this special page called cart should mm -hmm. be using the same uh, template as this page, and it's not right now. Oh, sorry, it is. Um, it just, you see the home, about home, that it's just the same color as the background. That's why we no, I, I understand, but why is in this, the reason why these are showing up is because the background header here has this image in here, but your cart and your, and uh, your shopping cart, yeah, your shopping cart doesn't, it doesn't have that same background header. Right. So you have two options here. You can either add um, in your menu bar, you can add a background color for all your internal pages and just keep the home one transparent, or you can add images to each of the pages so you could see the menu bar. Okay. Cool. Oh. You know how to do that? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I, was asking, I was asking Yolanda if she knows No that. idea. <laughs> That, that sounds okay, because I think the page that we're seeing, well, not I think, those are Woo pages. I don't know how to link them to the, the original theme that you're seeing right now. Um, that is, yeah, no idea. Well, well, <laughs> they are pages, right? They're regular pages. So okay. let's look at the checkout page on my site. Okay. So... Here's the, the regular pages, right? The, these Woo special Woo pages are just regular pages with a WooCommerce shortcode on them. And right. so however they're configured, and with, with, with which page, so for example, here's a checkout page. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. edit the checkout page and you should see um, uh, which template it's using. You may, you may have not selected which page template you're using. Oh. Um, so on my site, I have, um, the page template is under page attributes, I believe. Uh, no. Uh, it should be down here. I don't know if I have any page templates. So on mine, on mine, I guess it's using by default. So there's only one page template probably and it's just using it. I think I know Page what attributes. Oh, yeah. Uh, the parent isn't it under the parent uh that's just a hierarchy no i don't have a parent for this it's not gonna, there's you 
If there's page templates, they actually show up here. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have any page templates, so it's probably, but this is actually all there is. That whole functionality to show the checkout is just this uh, short code, WooCommerce checkout. Um, I, I'm sorry, can I, can I ask something? Um, normally here you have, you can, oh no, you're back. Just changed it. Sorry, what do you want me to do? Um, if you go, when you go, can you go back to where you were earlier in the, I think the cart or checkout? Okay. I don't know if she would want to do it. Here, if you change it to HTML and you change the background color. It's not a, that's not the solution I would recommend. No, You're I starting see. to hack your site to kind of over, to, to kind of figure out how to make the background stuff change. It's going to look like dog's breakfast. You need to okay. actually, you need to actually adopt the, the, the natural themes header from footers. Okay. So I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that way of, to go. Like, Cause then you're just kind of making these exceptions, but it really is supposed to use the standard. Okay. The standard thing. Um, Dan just joined. Hey, Dan. Dan. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank Sorry, you. Honey. Quick question on WooCommerce. Um, if we have a if we have a site that's not using um, it's not using the um, like here this site right here that I have shared. Do you see it? YolandaDouglas.com. Yeah. There's a standard. There's a theme here being used, and it's and all these standard pages are obviously using the theme. But for some reason, the uh, WooCommerce pages are not using that same header. Well, they actually use the footer, interestingly. Well, no, they are using it, but for some reason, the full header on these other pages doesn't appear. So like, maybe there's something, maybe there's something missing on the configuration of these pages that- um, the, the what, what, Well, what I can see is like on all the pages, there's a background image, right? Yeah, that's in here. Yeah, and the uh, the menu which is white is overlaid over the background image. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So I think maybe on the these these shop pages, there's a way to add that featured image or background image. Yeah, on the actual page. Yeah. And then. Oh, it might be actually a featured image that's there. Uh, yeah. It, well, yeah. We'd have to look at the the back end of the edit screen of the page. So what Dan is saying is that those pages are missing the featured image. Might as, be, I don't know, like- As a yes. background. So you can add the background of that same image and then it will actually push everything down and have your navigation will appear properly. You can try that, you know, just add one of the images. Okay. The featured image sometimes goes- to Oh, that's image. your site, sorry. Well, yeah, I know I'm not logged in on this site. Yeah. I, I, I'm not able to get, for some reason, my credentials that were shared with me, I know. <laughs> Yolanda, are you logged in on yours? You want to share your screen? I, I am. I just, uh, but my, my computer is so slow. I, okay. I just updated the checkout with a featured image. Um, I don't know if you, you can refresh on your end because my computer is really slow, so I don't want to hold everybody up waiting for me. So, so cart? Did you update the cart or what did you update? Uh, no, I updated the checkout. So the land the checkout. checkout. Yeah. The checkout page. Slash checkout. Yeah. And I just added a no. no, this one actually doesn't have a, a menu at all at the top. Yeah, nice. Okay. Well, some the, the checkout page usually that you don't want it to have a menu because you don't want to interfere anything but clicking on the buy button. Okay. So that makes sense. But like in the cart page, you know, you want to let allow people to to see like the menu. I added it to the wrong place. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Like, again, I think that this configuration is too complex for your site to use a, a whole WooCommerce configuration. So I would, I would suggest a shopping cart. But if you want, if you, just because you're going to have to maintain all of the WooCommerce functionality and limitations and you're going to, you're always going to have to struggle with it. And I don't think you have that much of a complex uh, right. e-commerce scenario here to, to require full shopping cart functionality. Right. Okay. No, I'm, I'm going to do what you suggested. I think that's a really good idea. I'll just ditch Woo and go with that. 
I tried, tried just a simple forms builder. Gravity ninja forms, formidable forms. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, I don't think David is here, so. Okay, B, you actually that you we just talked to yours. Okay, uh, Fazal. Okay, hello, Fazal, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, dating blog is X, X, GXD Labs. Lost how to do internal links on page SEO permalinks. Okay, yeah, what is I think that? What do you question... mean by lost on how to do this? No, yeah, I think because uh, I was looking for a WordPress group and um, yeah, I think my questions are mostly SEO related more than like technical stuff. So mm. I was just looking for some people, maybe they can uh, like privately maybe help, not exactly on the screen or something. Because you know? I was looking to people to connect with because this is a bit hard to learn by himself. You know? Does anybody have any recommendations for Fazal on how to do SEO? Like on page SEO mostly? But this conversation comes up pretty much every time we have this meetup. So I guess I would say, Fazal, what what SEO are you using on your WordPress site? Oh, uh, you mean the SEO plugin? Yeah. Yeah, it's Yoast Yoast SEO. Okay. I've worked through some of the Yoast SEO online webinars. Yeah. And then I've tried to edit my snippets as okay. they recommend to see if I go up in the SEO ranking. I haven't been successful yet, by the way, but okay. that's been my strategy anyway, because mm -hmm. I'm competing against some pretty well-established players in the market. Yeah. So I find that I'm doing Twitter, Medium, that kind of thing, but okay. I'm, I'm interested in hearing what other people might recommend as well. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, it's well, it's, it's, it's a complex game. I don't know. It's, uh, you have to know uh, like the content, the keyword density and uh, everything related to that. It's a bit. Uh... Well, there's like millions of articles online, but you know, if you, uh, if you live in the Toronto area, GTA, you can go into Linda, which is a course um, website, online courses. And okay. you can have free access if you have a library card. And okay. there are some good ICO courses there that, that will give you the fundamentals. And then at least you'll know what you're looking for or, or the, the niche that you want to improve because okay. it's such a vast area, the SEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. Even if you have a small budget, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can go on uh, Fiverr. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's it's cheap. There's also other freelancer websites or services, but, but yeah, Fiverr is one of them, I guess. Here's the, um, here's the, I'm gonna share this in chat. This is the, uh, the um, okay. This is the lynda.com SEO video, uh, SEO marketing, one of the marketing courses. And then here is a, all of the various SEO training tutorials. As you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff. Okay, thank you. There's, there's quite a bit. Of... It would probably be a good idea to throw in a little bit of HTML um, simply because to understand how to create a link is to understand some of the basics of the HTML markup language. So you can't really avoid that in the process. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And okay. if you want to learn more, go on YouTube, or you can just Google uh, New Boston. Actually, let me Google. Let me send it to you. New okay. Boston, he provides a lot of training on everything. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so this is, a, this is like, this is a topic that has a lot of answers. And, and frankly, there's not, there, there's, there's nothing really magical about it it's just a lot of hard work and you're competing in your particular space against some fairly heavy investments that are going that. My name is for, dat for dating right so like you're competing against <laughs> so if you're is the objective to drive traffic and, and sell banner ads on your site is that what you're trying to do 
Uh, yeah, also ClickBank and like Commission jun Junction, uh, you know, trying mm -hmm. to promote dating, trying uh -huh. to promote like dating sites too. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a tough niche, I guess, but uh, I guess with a lot of content or a lot of work there, I guess I could go forward a bit. Uh, okay, uh, you're more optimistic <laughs> than I am about this. Um, like because because if you if you just like just you just all you have to do is really just take some of your headers here and your in your articles and Google it and see where you end up, like. What you what you're trying to do is you're trying to compete around all these other opinions being written by think about all the vertical markets that write about this uh so networks like television and radio networks uh magazines i mean like humongous media properties that news sites you name it like they're all kind yeah. of com you're all competing against them so um you know, like there is, there is SEO and you can do more, but the question is like, what's your objective? Like you think, you know, you, you, I, you know, you're, you probably need to drive hundreds of thousands of visits to your site for advertising to be worth it. Right. So, um, it's, it's pretty competitive. I, have to say. Yeah. I, think the, I think your niche is too general and broad anyway. Like I think you've got, you may have to specialize in a particular niche so, mm -hmm. so you can compete. And that's what that keyword analysis looks like. Right. Okay. When you, when you look at you, certain keywords that you have here and, com and see what, how you're competing against them, you'll see just how, how competitive those spaces are. What is going on, guys? My name is Bucky Roberts, and welcome to your very first tutorial in Angular 2. Now, what I was going to do is... Come on, somebody just turned on their Angular 2 tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Ern so is getting into business with Angular. Yeah. Uh, That's Bucky, uh, Bucky Roberts, uh, the new Boston uh, link I sent. So on a side note, Fazal, if you're looking for a better um, dating site, I have a domain name called uh, prisonlovers.com if you want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, I can look into it. <laughs> put, it put it into, uh, put it into Very the, the chat. <laughs> I don't have a big budget. So <laughs> put it into the chat. Well, it's 10 the grand domain. and it's yours. It's just a domain name it means nothing yeah. to anybody. You got to build something on it, right? Yeah. Um, Let's go question. Yeah, there's a question that was uh, Monique or no, sorry, uh, not Monique. Anique. Are you hearing me? Yeah, go ahead, Anique. Okay. Um, yes, it's Anique. Uh, on my domain. Um, anytime I use, I've used so many, oh, I've used so many um, themes and they all are giving me problems. I've been doing this for years, but I've decided to just go with WordPress's theme and I chose 2010 to 2020. And now it's telling me I built two websites and now it keeps telling me PHP update report. I know what happened. Hello? Yeah. Hi. This happened to me too. Yeah, so I went through the instructions. It says contact WordPress. I have no clue how to contact WordPress. I did everything I could do, but I don't know what else to do. And can I get some help, please? Okay. Which Maybe hosting are you using? Sorry? Which hosting? Which? Where are you hosted? Oh, Bluehost. Well, I, would, I, would go, I would Google, and I'm going to share my screen. PHP is a software that runs WordPress. And so if you need PHP upgrade, you need to uh, talk to your host or, uh, or find out how they... You can upgrade your PHP version. And here's a nice little article here on how to change your PHP version on Bluehost. Yeah, if you are using also Bluehost, if you go to uh, support, they can help you to upgrade your PHP. Uh, Bluehost support on the chat is horrible. Yeah. yeah. I have to call. Does anybody, can someone t say whether or not it, this is a cPanel host or 
you're using cPanel? Um, I don't know if that applies, but I, I thought cPanel applied to everyone that had a website. No, uh, no um, about, si about 60 or 70% of hosts uh, provide cPanel uh, or provide it as an option. I, I mention that simply because, first of its popularity, and second, because it has a specific section for the PHP language upgrade. And it's actually trivial in the sense of the change itself. You just click a button, select the language version you want, 7.3, 7.4, whatever. But the important point is, the important point is that in order for that to work, you have to check to make sure that the plugins you're running are compatible with the version of PHP you're selecting. And therefore you use a plugin called, for example, PHP compatibility. And that will go through all your plugins and report back which ones are non-compliant so that when you replace or delete them, then you can go back to the hosting panel, click the PHP language button, do the update, and it should be flawless. And I mean, that's really, there's no interaction with the host other than through a cPanel or other hosting admin facility. The, the host doesn't have to have personnel involved. So I did what you suggested and it still didn't help. I'm sorry, say it again? I already did that, it didn't help. Did what? All of what you said. So you checked your plugins. Yes. And I you went that. you went to the C panel, you made the change in the C panel. Yeah, I downloaded that PHP help thing. I did all of that, it still didn't help. So when you go back to the cPanel, does it show the language as 7.3 or 7, whatever it is? Nope. It doesn't accept the change. Okay, but it so doesn't say 7.3, it says it needs to be at 7.4, but there is no 7.4 option. Well, it's whatever the highest level is, 7.3 will be accepted by WordPress. Well, I clicked on it, but it, it there's no difference. Wait a second, so you're running 7.2.8? It should be updated, so that should be very straightforward. Well, it's straightforward, and I'm saying I'm just saying it should be in that. I mean, can you show us the C panel and the setting that you did there? Because, um, I mean, I run across this on, on a number of different hosts, and it's always essentially been the same. The headache is in the uh, debugging of the plugin. Right. Um, so, so Anik, would you, would you, would you want to share your screen and log into your uh, website, your WordPress site, and show us your site health under tools so we can see what... I, I don't know how to share my screen. There's a share screen button on the bottom of Zoom that's got a green little arrow pointing up. It's in our Brady Bunch view where all the videos and of all the people are. Okay. Um, you don't need to many? go to the... If you're using Elementor, uh, you just use the sysinfo, and it'll tell you everything about yeah. uh, what PHP you're using. Well, and just, I, we don't need we don't need Elementor. We just need tools, site help to see if um, I'm not using Elementor. No, I decided to try something new. Yeah, but, I just want to see what where your error is coming up, and then uh, or so where your warning is coming up, and then we'll check the site help to see what. I don't it, see the share thing. I don't see it on the Zoom. Move your move your mouse around, and you'll see the bottom toolbar with a few buttons. You have to be on the on the view where all of I'm our on little full screen. Um, I see reactions. Oh, share screen is right there in my eyes. <laughs> once you see it, you can never unsee it. Can I mention something? Um, I had the same problem with GoDaddy. It's because I was on an old platform, so they moved me to a new platform and everything was fixed. Uh -huh, because they don't have PH, the newest version of PHP on your old platform, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the Bluehost, or what is it? Yeah, Bluehost, they should have an updated version of PHP for you to switch to. So, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so okay. show us your WordPress to you, so we can see where your error is coming up. So, let me go back Okay. 
Okay, see it says PHP update required. We go under tools um, and go to site health. I want to see what current version you have. It says look you they looks like you want they want you to go to seven point two. It's just a little slow, so just slow. It's a really old computer. Clean your cash. No, it doesn't look like it, it doesn't In look like a computer time. problem. It looks like a website hosting problem. You're really slow for just bringing up site health. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, Alex. Yeah, it's. Uh, I try to speed it up by doing these things, but so you so you have your host is running seven point zero three three. Okay. Yeah, so I tried updating it on my host on Bluehost on cPanel, but it won't upgrade. Well, let's show show me where where you did that. It's, it looks like you have to do it under PHP Version Manager. So I tried to let me go back in there. Mm hmm. Don't you have a panel open, a tab open with cPanel? Oh, yes, I do. That's PHP admin. No. Um, You're into something else. Okay. It's okay. So it's under advanced. Right, definitely. And then right here, right? No. This one? No. no. It's, it says it's PHP version, version manager. Um, 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 click on your keyboard on Command F and type PHP. Yeah. Those are the. the oh. This one. Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. So that keeps on showing, and see, I upgrade them, but it won't change. Huh. Well, your host definitely is not reflecting what you're what it's showing there. The WordPress but, on here. the right hand side, it says PHP version. Right. Did you apply that? The, the... Oh, right. Right at the top there. Yeah. Uh, but she already oh. has it. She already has it for No, no. You got to select probably the domains you want to apply it to. Oh, I did that. Uh, I did that already, but I guess. Yeah. I'll... Yeah. I mean, I would do one side at a time. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't work, why fix five sites? <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it's set. So it didn't change. Can you go back to the PHP, to the, to the WordPress site? Sorry? Go back to your WordPress site and let's take a look and see what it says. Oh boy. <laughs> sort of weird, isn't it, that if you're logged in under one tab, and you yeah. go to a new tab, you have to log in again. I'm not yeah, used to that's that. kind of um, a security issue. Right? It's not surprising to me. It's it's unfortunate, but it's definitely not surprising. And it always says there's a problem loading your notification. I don't know what that means. It's not from it's probably not from WordPress, it's probably from there. From okay, there. so Yeah. That's where it shows you which version of uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's updated. So, what it wants seven point four. Okay, seven point three two is seven point three is good enough. It's not a critical error anymore. So you're running 7.32. That's the latest version your host uh, supports anyway, right? Okay. Will that speed everything up? Because everything is just a little slow. I doubt it. You're already you're already running on version seven. 
Mm. What can yeah. I do to speed things up? And thanks for the help of this. Things up? Well, there's a lot of, anybody have any advice on, on first of all, like what exactly is slow? Is it like everything or is it like, well, parts yeah. of the site or? Um, well, when I go on to check the website on a different website that checks, you know, speed and stuff, SEO and stuff, it says, the first thing it says is that the alt images um, are not applied to all pictures, but it's a lie. So, cause I put all the alt images in and it seems like they're not communicating because it well, all, well, all tags have, don't have anything to do with page speed. That's more SEO. Page speed is more so about your assets that are loading on your website, how big they are, what you're loading, have, and the org and how they're loading. See, I don't have much plugins, um, but it's still it's. I think it's five to can, seven. Can, can I ask you like a? Can I ask you a simple question? Yeah. What makes What makes you other than those those sites that tell you that your site is slow? What makes you think your site is slow? Is it, do you get people complaining about it or is it, or is it, do you feel no. it? Because I loaded well, your site just now and it loads pretty fast. Uh, well, people are bouncing. Well, that's not because your site is slow. <laughs> oh, it's because of the content? Oh, yeah, of course. Because, I mean, it's because of, because, because normally bouncing, do you expect every single person to go in on more than one page? That's just no, not no. Realistic, right? Yeah, let me show you how, what your site, my, your experience on your site is to me like it's pretty fast right you've got content here you've got here's your blog it loads pretty darn fast right well there's more stuff there before but everything got erased so i had to start over again i had oh. so I mean, much there's, there's content here there's yeah i just ran a i just ran a pingdom test on your on your home page alone and you know it's not bad it's actually fairly simple and you get you get maybe two seconds maybe a tad more um on your page load there um you can, you know, you can always do more, but I think based upon Pingdom's results, it's, it's not bad. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on um, all these technical speed things because honestly, we, we hear this question all the time, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a distraction. That's, that's the word I would use for it. A lot of people think that because there's, I mean, unless your site is just dramatically slow and there's really, it's full of malware or something. Site speed of like well, a second or two doesn't really make that much difference. What makes difference is are you connecting with your audience as to, as to what, whether they're finding when they get to your site something that they want to do or engage in some way. So, I mean, if you just work on more content, you know, yeah. I have too much content and well, no, just, no, I wouldn't say work on more content is like a catch all. All of us can work on more content, right? The question is, is that content going to actually do anything for you, right? Oh, is it actually okay. going to connect with your audience. So what I would suggest is find a few people that are your friends and tell them what you do and then tell them to go to visit your website and ask them the question is like, what did you get when you visited my website of what I do? Like that, that, that's a, like did, did is what I do and on what's on my website consistent with that message. And if they say no, which is most of the time, they'll be like, I have no idea what you do by visiting your site. Or you can say, go to my website, like do it on the phone with them or do it with a Zoom. Have them go to the website and say, visit my site, do you know what I do? And ask them to, to explain what you do. And if they can't, that's the issue. Most okay. of the time, it's an issue of communication, of clarity of what, what you do and what you have offer on offer to somebody of value of somebody coming to your site. Everything about speed is a distraction. All that stuff about like, well, it's fast and this, it isn't gonna change your balance. I and mean, you can read all these articles that talk about that, but okay. all those articles are refinements towards already a good communication of a marketing message to your audience. If you don't do that, no matter how fast your site is, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a good bounce rate. Okay, okay. Well, I'll work on that then. Thanks for the help. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some other questions. Um, Arzu? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, so I have a website called primalwellbeing.com. And I am actually offering courses there. And, uh, but I'm very new on 
uh, WordPress. Uh, it's been a, a couple of months that I started to build it and I'm not a professional, so I just learned it myself. Anyways, um, I designed two websites, which they um, finally collapsed. Anyway, um, lately I um, subscribed uh, a, a tool, a plugin, uh, which allows me to sell courses with subscription and um, with membership. But uh, lately, uh, I checked on YouTube and saw that there is a courseware for WooCommerce. Um, would courseware? you be able to? Did you say courseware? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> but I couldn't find that plugin uh, in there. I actually would like to ask if you have any idea where to find it and how to integrate it to. To work, uh, WooCommerce. How to integrate your your membership plug into WooCommerce? Yeah. What, no, no, no. That's not the question. The question, is, I hope I already have uh, uh, Yit, uh, which which is already integrated with WooCommerce. But I am trying to uh, put another in, uh, plugin, yes, which is, is Roberts, it in runs the your very first tutorial. In oh, sorry. Uh, uh, which integrates with WooCommerce is. Uh, Courseware or LMS plugins. Okay. Oh, a, a LMS plugin. Okay. Uh, WooCommerce has an add-on called Sensei LMS. Yeah, I know. I That's know. their LMS add-on. If if you're using WooCommerce and you would like to add a LMS, you would use Sensei. That's their own uh, add-on for for e-learning. But there are all. You know, there are other plugins. Most of them are paid, like um, yeah, premium ones. But if you want to stick with WooCommerce and stick with their system, so Sensei is the one to use. So, do you think that would be it would work with the membership and subscription and courseware all together and well, product? Those are fairly complex uh, integrations. You should you should uh, look it up. See, I, I can't tell you if, if WooCommerce and Sensei work together with other membership plugins or not. Uh, you, you'd have to dig into that and, and check for yourself. But uh, if you're looking into staying with the WooCommerce ecosystem, so they have the Sensei. Sorry? Is I'm saying if, if you wanna keep with WooCommerce, they have Sensei LMS. Uh -huh. That's the only option, right? No, you can use other LMS systems, but they might not, might or might not integrate with WooCommerce. They they can integrate maybe PayPal or other other gateways, <laughs> but not specifically WooCommerce. It. It's going to allow you to download all. The are you files. trying well, to, I, or is, are you trying I, to sell a subscription to the learning uh, package? Is that what you're trying to do? Well, uh, I'm actually doing it right now. Uh, I'm uh, selling the courses with. With the subscription, because okay. I have recurring recurring uh, option on it, and but it's not so practical. People are confusing this, and there are some limited uh, issues with, with the subscription to sell the courses. So uh, recently, I found that there is a courseware for something, some plugin called called uh, courseware, which is uh, one of the best plugins. What they said so. Uh, for WordPress and which is integrates with WooCommerce. That's why I'm asking if you have any idea about that. Mm. It's like, are you asking if you have experience with that? Yeah. Well, hmm. so a lot of the, a lot of the LMS systems already kind of built in subscriptions on how to actually buy them, you know, how to, how to buy the courses already built into them. Right. Because they already kind of like, especially if they're WooCommerce enabled, they should have the ability to do that. What, what are you trying to accomplish? Let's start, instead of ch trying to find the solutions, what are you trying to actually do? What's, um, your, what, what's your business objective? I'm, I'm selling courses as products. So, uh, so have, uh, yeah. Go ahead. What kind of courses and what do they, what do they teach? Uh, yoga and uh, Vedic philosophy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And coaching. 
kind of stuff. So why are they done under subscription? Why, why, why the subscription piece? As opposed to this traditional, like buy something like on a shopping cart and then have access to it. Uh, some of uh, some of the courses, uh, let's say I have a meditation series, which is like 21 days, which I would want to sell them just once. And uh, so they are, uh, I, they are sold with the subscription plugin because uh, they are uh, giving the opportunity to limiting the, uh, the uh, series, like um, some of the meditation series, I limit them with one month. I mean, after a month, uh, if uh, somebody, you know, try to, uh, wants to get a second time, they have to sub subscribe it again. So, uh, what is not working here, actually, there are some problems because I'm, I'm dealing with Turkey. And uh, let's say I, I deal with the lifter LMS, LMS ones. But the problem was the front page is not um, translation friendly, so I cannot translate it in Turkish. And uh, my clients are Turkish, so that's that's one of the basic problem. You can't co co translate the content? Uh, is it like when you say the front page? I mean front end is. Oh the, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna yeah. show one of our sponsors. I'll show a solution for that. It'll, sure. it'll translate anything. So you can. So that was one of our sponsors for our for our meetup or has a translation service that will definitely translate your content. Well, it's not the point though. I tried uh, many of the options with that. I, I already uh, translate with myself also, but there are some, uh, you know, some directions that uh, they, they don't let you translate them. Weglot will translate anything on your WordPress site. It works very different than the translation plugins. Completely different technology. Have you ever heard of Weglot? What? Weglot. Weglot. No. One of our sponsors. Let's let's eight o'clock. So why don't we just why don't we actually go into that because uh, they uh, okay. they're sponsoring our meetup. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Weglot. Heather mentioned WPML or Polylang. There's a lot of translators, uh, translation plugins that that are plugins that actually integrate with WordPress and and have you compile translation strings for various parts of your site. The thing about them though, is that they, they, like you said, they're, they, you know, first of all, they're there, you have to configure them. And second of all, there are certain plugins or certain functionality that is not translated because it's either not ready to be translated by one of these plugins or it's hard coded somewhere into your site. So Weglot is one of our sponsors. Uh, they're a company in Paris, France, and they have a very cool plugin called, uh, well, it's called Weglot. So I'm going to bring it up on our screen here and I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, let's see here. Thanks Heather for joining us. appreciate your time. Um, so this is Weglot. So how does Weglot work? Weglot is a cloud-based translation service. You actually log in and you um, pay per month based on the number of words it translates. And what it does is it installs a very small plugin into your website. Uh, we use it on wptoronto.com. So you can see kind of how it works. Uh, it, it installs into your website and it gives you, you can specify how many languages you want. I haven't touched any of the content on our site. I haven't installed any plugin to translate anything. Everything is, is happening dynamically, interactively when you select the language. So any piece of content that comes on the site that's textual, any menu bar, anything like this is completely translated dynamically based on uh, the languages that I made available. And it, what it does is that the first time it encounters some new content, whether that be in a form or whether that be in some sort of a, um, a menu or a button or something like that, it actually looks up in its dictionary in the cloud and says, is this piece of text from this website translated yet? If it isn't, then it goes ahead and translates it dynamically in the cloud and then renders it on your site. So I am not maintaining, if I put a new blog post up, I don't have to make a translation of it anywhere. I don't have to populate anything. It automatically is available in these languages anytime I want. Um, so when you, um, so how does this actually work? Uh, the way it works is when you log into um, the Weglot, 
You can try it for free. I think it's for free. You get, uh, I believe, a thousand words, um, and you can uh, install the plugin for free. And what what you what you get is you get like this sandbox where you configure all your sites. So for example, here's WordPress Toronto, and it shows us all of the languages that we have on our website. So you can see we have all these languages installed, and it shows how many words have been translated. Okay, so if I wanted to look at the dictionary for one of these words, I can go into, for example, the Spanish dictionary, and I can see, uh, I can find the translations for all the content that's been translated on our site. So you can see, for example, uh, if I want to find where the word WordPress occurs, I, I can see these de definitions, and you'll see these are, this is the, 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 the snippet of text that it, uh, that it got off the, the website, and here's a translation. If I don't like the way it's translated, I can actually override that and save it in the translation dictionary after the fact. So it translates for me before with machine language translations in the cloud. And then it, you don't have to hire a translator. And then if you want to fix a translation, you can always go, go in and actually fix a translation. One of the other cool features it has is a way to create um, special stop words. So you can specify uh, wh what you want translated and what you don't want translated. So for example, if you want to, um, there's a glossary here, you can specify, for example, the word locale, which is the name of our workspace. I don't want to ever translate it because it's, I, you know, I, I want to keep it in the original language or the word WP Toronto or the word WordPress. I don't, I don't want to translate it. You can, tran you, can add, you can add translation rules that can specify whether it's translate, whether it, you can translate it or not. Um, so um, for, if I want to, for example, look at a particular web page, let's say I want to look at the Italian translation on our homepage. So here I'm looking at the homepage and these are all the various pieces of content that are on the homepage. So if there's anything that I don't like, I can kind of review all the content on the homepage and make some changes here if I want to. These are like, for example, our menu bars. And this, this specifies that this is an automatic translation, meaning that it was automatically done. So any, any other pages, for example, our, con, our contact page, if you look at our, con, um, let me go back to English here. Um, if you look under uh, code of conduct. So this page here has been automatically translated with all of these various different strings. So for example, if you look at group, guide, group guidelines and code of conduct, it's right here, right? So if I, if I switch to Italian, I, sw I see this, um, uh, let me just uh, turn that off. So I see this, this piece of text right here. If I don't like the way that this piece of text is translated, uh, and let's say I'm just gonna, I don't know Italian, but let's say it's, um, uh, I can add my text here, okay? And then I'll save it. And so now I'll say this is a manually edited translation. When I refresh this page, we got automatically will look into this website. Let me just see. Yeah, it should look. It should look into it. Let's see. Let's see if that's actually the right piece of content here. Group guidelines and code of conduct. Yeah, didn't update it. That's interesting. Well, that's because I have. I have. Uh, let me go back to my site, see if I have a, if I have any more translations left. Uh, I still have translations left. Okay. Let me make sure that's actually the correct. Uh, this conduct page. Maybe it's this one here. Just you can see. Yeah. 
Well, I want to see why this isn't changing, but this is how you actually override the uh, translations that are set in your site. Um, if I wanted to add another uh, plugin, I can just, or another language, I just log into the admin. And uh, I can go into the, uh, can go into the, the Weglot plugin here, and I can specify what languages are available um, on my site. So here, this is, is to add another language to the site. It's just a matter of adding another language here. You can select from one of several hundred languages. If they wanted to add Turkish, you can add Turkish to the site. Hit uh, save. Let's see if Turkish comes up for me. Uh, so here's uh, here's Turkish now. So here this website has no Turkish content. I added it in the plugin. So now when I switch to Turkish, automatically this content will be start to be translated into Turkish. It takes a little longer for the first page because it's downloading this web page. But now all my blog posts have been uh, translated into Turkish. If I go into this um, blog right here, now you'll see that this website now has been down downloaded into Turkish and uh, obviously the videos aren't downloaded yet but here's all the content that we had originally in English now it's in Turkish as well um, and so it's you can see it's very transparent it doesn't really you don't have to maintain any translation strings unless you actually want to override the existing string so if you go back to um, let me go ahead and revert this back to uh, delete the uh, not this one. I'll delete this one. That, that, that way it'll actually, it'll go back. When I go back to uh, Italian, if I go back to Code of Conduct, it should automatically, it should automatically go into the, it should automatically retranslate this, this, text, this text for me. Um, and so if I go back to um, the languages, you'll see that this, translation for Turkish is being actually now there's only 2000 words although the words that I just visited so it dynamically starts adding the dictionary as people visit these pages they start automatically being compiled in the translation dictionary and no matter where the content is on your page whether it be in a form or in a in a drop down or anything like that it automatically finds all that content and translates for you so the amount of time it takes to introduce translation is like night and day compared to any other translation plugin because it it's a different approach instead of you compiling a list of translation strings and then translating them and putting them into the system this actually looks at your website and translates on the fly and allows you to fix translations that are uh that are problematic so so the question is uh um would you recommend we got over wpml ali reza asks me um, yeah, I would. They're a sponsor of our site. And the second thing is, my experience is that WPML doesn't translate everything. So, like, they, they, you, you have to install it and manage the translation strings. So, if you want to manage the translation strings, yes. Or if you, I think they also have a service like this now, where you can actually do machine language translation. But I think that you still have to introduce the translations and manage them in WPML. This is a, this is a different, uh, this is a this is a completely different product, but you know you, it's a very different product, and it's also priced very differently. I, I don't know what the WPML pricing is. I haven't looked at it recently. Let's just take a look and see. This is um, it's much cheaper. It's like eighty bucks. Yeah, yeah because because it's but it's but does it include the translations though? No, no. You it's have just, to it's translate. Just, yeah, you have to translate. So the question is, how much does it cost to, to, for the translation service? Right. right? It's more than uh, Weglot. Yeah. Apparently. So like th there's a completely different kind of product. This is a product that enables you to store translations and put, puts them in place. Weglot is the, 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 the translation service as well, right? It's the, it's all in one, right? And it doesn't, and it doesn't store any of the translations on your site. It stores them in the cloud. Like I showed you in the dictionary. 
So very different kind of solutions. Um, uh, you can see they have like various different, um, you can, you can, you, you can see like, this is a, this is a plugin that's been around for a long time. So it has translation management. Uh, so you could send content for translations. Uh, that's if you, um, like, if you want to, if you actually, uh, uh, if you expect your users or you expect you have a volunteers that actually do translation for you, they'll, they'll populate it. And then they obviously support the, the ability to store the translations for your content, but they don't do the translation. Um, and so, and there are certain plugins and themes and stuff like that, that inevitably will be problematic for this plugin because it doesn't always necessarily know exactly where to find all this, all the pieces of content. This Weglot doesn't care about what you have installed. It's completely, it only looks at the website and, and does a pass of your content and, and reads it from their database of translations and dynamically inserts it on the fly. So it's a completely different technological service for doing translations. And um, really, it's kind of a matter of like seeing what your preference is. Anybody have any questions about Weeblot? I'm going to go ahead and el eliminate um, translations here. I'm going to go back and take it off. So I think I'm, now I'm going to remove the, the Turkish service from uh, from my uh, from my site. And that's basically this is how easy it is to introduce a new language. So if somebody needs to be in multiple languages, it's uh, um, yeah, see, I removed it from the dictionary and autom autom automatically removed it from the destination languages already. So they kind of communicate with each other from the dashboard. And so now Turkish should be gone from the dictionary. Let's take a look and see if it, in fact, it is gone. No, it's still there. Let's see. Yeah, it's let, me, let me go back and save these Weeglot changes to make sure that, in fact, that language is not there anymore. Yeah, our site needs a PHP upgrade too. I just saw I just saw a message that let's see, no Turkish, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your explanation. Okay. Are there any other questions? It's about eight twelve. Um um, yeah, I have a question. Sure. Uh, cause you're talking about uh, upgrading or updating or I just, uh, can you just tell me, I don't know anything about this, but I keep getting these notices, um, free Java update eight version eight update. Um, I have an old, it says my system has an older version of Java. Uh, but I, I don't use Java. So, but I, I keep getting these, these, these messages. I don't know if I should be concerned about it at all or whatever. Is it related to WordPress? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's the only reason I would have it is because I have WordPress. Like, I wouldn't have it for any other re reasons. I, I don't. Your operating use it. system is just reminding you to update something. So you might as well just go ahead and update it. There's no, there's no harm in updating. But I. I, I, I update my WordPress. Not right, but your, your, your operating system has potential software needs to be updated as well. So it's probably just reminding you to update something that's loaded on your computer. But you it's, mean but it's, Java. Not, it's not important Java. on WordPress. It's not, it's, not, it's not relevant to WordPress. Right, I didn't think so. I just was asking what it is because I don't use it. I'll just ignore it then. I'll just ignore it. You can, or you can ignore it. You can even, you can even remove WordPress from your site if, or remove Java, Java from your computer if you don't really need to, if you don't think you need it for anything. Uh, I don't know where it is, but I'll check it later. You can, un you can, yeah, you can probably uninstall it. Yeah. Okay, so you've answered my question. We don't need that for, we don't need it for WordPress. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody else has something else that, uh, that they think it, it is required. Is it? I don't think so. I don't know if it's related to the Adobe Suite and stuff. Um, because I have the Adobe Suite uh, running on your computer. Yeah. Um, also, um, has, has has anyone got Catalina here? The latest version the of the Mac operating system, Catalina. Anyone <laughs> upgraded to Catalina? On 
Mac OS? No? I don't have it. Don't you use Catalina to, um, to write, like to create app? It, okay. It's just the, it's the next operating system. It's, it's oh, no. higher, higher than what I'm using now. Okay, nobody knows about it because I had a question about that. Sorry. It's not related to WordPress. Um, Sorry. Anybody else have any questions? Hi, can I ask a question about my website? Sure. Um, so my website, I'll just type it in the chat. Just advice with my. So when you search it up on Google, um, when you do the site colon, semicolon, and then advice with my, my meta description isn't matching and my like title and site, it's really messed up. Like there's double separators. I use Yoast SEO. So I'm just wondering what can I do to fix that? So when you do, sorry, when you do this. I want to share your screen so you can see what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. Um, Okay, do you see it? So when I do this, so for example, it looks like that. Then there's like two separators here. The, the this meta description is for another post. So um, click, on, click on one of those posts that has two, two, uh, two dashes. Is that sure. what you're concerned about? Yeah, yeah, and I removed from Yoast SEO, I removed uh, so it doesn't show oh, tags. Just, just, just go ahead and click on it and we'll see what the title tag is. Okay, sure. So that's coming up with a title tag. So it doesn't look like, yeah, I see the title tag doesn't have the dashes and it just says life hacks like archives. Yeah, and I remove Yoast to not include tags on Google search. Um, well, the title is, what's showing up on that link there is your title of your page, which is life hacks archives with a, with a vertical bar, right? Okay, so, so how do I, I? I mean, as far as I understand, that's what Google puts in the title of the, uh, the search result. Cause you know how you have tags for the post. So, so should I just eliminate tags altogether in order to avoid oh, this having this? Oh, this is actually, it's indexing the tag itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, um, I mean, it's another, it's another form of archiving of your content. So, um, but it, it doesn't look like it's, it's updated with the proper tag name with the top title of the tag. Cause yours has life tax archives. Yes. So should I just look up like archiving archives, like how that works on, like, what should I look up to troubleshoot this? Cause you know, I you know if your site is in problem with Google again, or you not, you know, the last time it's actually updated, it's, it's index of all your, are you all, all your pages? Um, well, I, I, I'm with Google. So I've already registered with Google search council and it like it runs through it. And I, I last week I updated my sitemap. Um, so did you, did you did you look up in your search console these pages that are problematic to see what it has in its? So the post itself, like when it's not archived under the tag, it's fine uh -huh. um, as the post itself. But showing up under categories and under tags, so then it shows up like this. So if I, when I just go on like the main page, it's not categorized under tags. It's being pulled up through Google and it's being titled under their tags instead of. Their actual um, categories. If that makes sense. Oh, is it not? Is it not also indexed with the tag, with the name of the post? Um, it is. So, like, let me see. If I go back. Mm. So it's mixed. It's mixing up. Like sometimes oh. I would have my archives mixed with my another post name here on the right side when it's not supposed to be like that, and then this description is coming from another post. Hmm. Like this is like a general description for my website, but it's pulling it for another <laughs> post. And I've already tried to read as much as I can about Yoast SEO to see what's going on there. Um, and like, it's like this, like, this is, it's confusing. <laughs> so much, I'm stuck. Hmm. Yeah. Um... I'm sure I have a, I have a, I have a quick answer for you to on how to get Google to properly. I mean, if, if you, if you have pages in the index that you think are confusing, then you should remove those pages for sure. And have, and have, the, and have Google remove them out of the index, right? Like if, if you think that they're not adding anything to your search result, 
definitely. Oh, okay. I, I would remove. I would remove them if they're confusing. If you think they're confusing. Yeah, I think that's an option for my tags, but I use my tags as um, to categorize my content. To that's part of my menu. So then that might be hard. But I'll. I'll okay. Well, I'll then you know, if you use your tags, if you do use them, then they publicly display. There's not much. I guess what you can make. I don't know if Yoast gives you ability to tell Google not to categorize the tags. Like yeah, so uh, like, let's just say right here. So here, right, tags, no, and then show SEO uh, sense. Well, no, this. That's, that's search results. That, when they hover over the question mark, I'm not too familiar with this, but does that mean that it doesn't index tags? Oh, no index, yeah, okay. So then if that's the case, then why is it indexing tags? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's uh, the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah, well, go open a ticket with Yoast and ask them why. If you have no tags posted, that did you did you install Yoast after your site was 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 uh, crawled? Um, I'm not sure. So, how would I resubmit for it to recall? Is that is that the correct question? Do I resubmit through Google Search Console? Is that what yeah, I should yeah, do? Yeah. 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 So how would I re I would just delete the Wii website and then just submit it again? Uh, well, no, the Google, you're not you deleting. You can ask for a there. crawl request from Google. Oh, yeah. crawl, crawl request? Okay, yeah. I'll do that again. Uh, you may actually even ask them to recrawl your, 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 your tag sites, but you know, like if, if Google has an index, if Google has already knows something, right. And now you've, you've told it not, and you told Yoast not to do it. So there might be some confusion. Maybe what's happening is it's keeping the old version of the tag, and now that it's called not to crawl it, it's just not recrawling your your tag sites to be updated anymore. So maybe okay. you should maybe you should include them in the in the archive so that they actually get updated with the proper tag titles. All right. Okay. Okay. Right? okay. I don't know. I don't know like the order of operations when Google searched them. I'm just guessing here, right? Like I'm I'm guessing that Google has an old out of date version of a set of your pages, including your tag pages, and now Yoast is telling Google not to index those pages anymore, which means they're kind of frozen as to when they were uh, last crawled. It's not, it's not, it's not telling it to remove it. It's just telling it do not re-index those clog pages. So then That's, it's just sitting there. Yeah, and, they're just okay. they're just there, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's kind, of, that's kind of what my my guess is. Yeah, I'll reach out to Yoast SEO. That's a really good um, no, advice. I'll, I'll say, do like, that. Why is my tag? If, and they may say, like, <laughs> they, they may say like, well, you have to recrawl your whole site or yeah. you, you have to delete, you have to, I mean, I'm not sure you can actually delete a site out of Google's art. They don't think you can tell them like, delete my site and recrawl it again. I'm right. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> right. Okay. That would, that would be problematic. I'll ask them to recrawl it. Okay. I'll do that too. Thank you so much. Sure. Anybody else have any other suggestions for Mylan? Is that how you say your name? Yeah, you said it perfectly. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Any other questions from anyone for this July edition of WordPress Toronto's Let's Fix Your WordPress site? Um, I just have one question based on what she what you just talked about with her. I don't think you I don't think you can get rid of anything that comes up on search. Like if someone searches if someone searches your name, there's all this history about you. Yeah. I don't think you can ask Google to delete it if it's inappropriate right now. Well, I mean, if you if if that piece of content you remove off the internet, then when Google tries to recrawl it again, it'll find that eventually it should remove it by itself because it doesn't exist anymore, right? Well, no, I don't think we can delete it. Like when people search your name and you've done things in the past, whatever it comes up on Google, I don't think we can. No, no, no. So like, let's say you have a web a web page about your business and you remove the website off the domain name and disappear all the pages oh. underneath it those pages yeah. that are in the index will eventually be removed from the index because it doesn't exist anymore. Oh so yeah. What will happen is, is okay. Google will have a site index and then you click on it, it will say not found, right? So Google wants to keep a clean index of sites. So if you take all the pages down under a site or some pages, eventually when it recrawls the site, if it finds that those are missing or if it finds that they've been redirected somewhere, it might update its cache to, uh, uh, to update to the new direction or the new, instance of that site of that web web page right um, but if you have copies of your of your page or if you have some other information about you and you don't control that site sure you can't delete those that's what i mean it has to do with a movie that you were in a movie 
that's, yeah, like it, that it comes is. right up when their name is searched of this movie that, that was like right, 25 right. years ago. And well, I don't, in the movie know. business, I don't think you can, it's a history. I don't think you can right. have anyone delete what actually happened. Right, exactly. And even then, then there's sites like archive.org that make a copy of all the sites on the internet anyway. So they have, they have a copy of it, even if the original version of this of the page disappeared. Who's that? Who's that that has a copy? Another copy? Who's that? Archive.org. Archive.org. Yeah. Archive. Like for example, let's say this is the Internet Archive. So this this website will t keep a copy of a website. So for example, let's say you wanted to see what Apple's website looked like. Yeah. 20 years ago. Well, you can. You can go like this. You search and you say, OK, well, let's look at what it looked like <coughs> in the year 2000 on March 2nd. Uh -huh. So you can actually see, see a, uh, a snapshot of the Apple website on March 3rd, 2000. It will go into its archive. And uh, well, interestingly enough, it got an, an error and then it redirects to this web page. Yeah. So this, in this case, it actually didn't load anything. Actually, uh, one second, here we go. It's bringing it up. There was something there. Oh, here we go. So this is what the Apple website looked like on March 3rd of 2000. It's coming up here piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the old MacBook they used to sell. And so there you go. This is a, this is what their site looked like. But that's, that's great. Uh, uh, do, I mean, do, do they keep this on individuals as well? Like I'm thinking of criminal investigations and sure. uh, do sure. they keep, on, on not just companies. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can put in any URL into this into this search engine. Oh, they that's an in, that's a very interesting site. <laughs> they have four hundred and fifty one billion web pages. Yeah, twenty six million books, five point nine million videos. I don't even know what that is. All oh, that songs probably fourteen million songs, TV shows. I don't know what that is. Pictures, audio. I don't. This is a nonprofit library of millions of free. So. So yeah, you can actually like go and these are collections. So, so if you go to Fern Kane, if you go into your website, let's see if it, if it finds other snapshots of your site. Uh, not sure if I did that correctly, did I? I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if I did that correctly. Didn't find anything. But anyway, you could you could type in any URL, or you can type in a particular, uh, you know, uh, NewYorkTimes.com. Let's see how that works. It might take a little while to load this page. <clears throat> so, Alex, where is this being hosted? Sorry. Where is it being hosted? This website. What? Oh, I have no idea. Probably the cloud. <laughs> Oh, if it's in the U.S., watch out. What do you mean? Because of the patriotic um, app, uh -huh. they can search anyone. And if they think that you committed any crimes, they can get you from anywhere. Well, I mean. Even if you're in Canada. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, they, there's lots of, like, there is information that's on the Internet that's, even though it's, you. oh, I'm sorry, I was actually, I was searching here. I have to actually search the Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine is, um, that's actually how the Wayback Machine is from what I remember how is how this thing worked. And I thought that's how it's supposed to work. Maybe it's broken. Hmm. But yeah, this is supposed to create, um, um, like if I put new path consulting, that kind of that works. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's actually loading or not. This seems to be, seems to be, uh, tough. but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, once something's on the internet, it's hard to really definitively get rid of it. That's for sure. That's true. All right, folks, it's 8.30. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this month. The next meetup is uh, on August uh, 18th, I believe. Same kind of format. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to the uh, Toronto WordPress group and just um, click um, click the um, August 18th event. There's actually a few other events coming up. Tomorrow, um, 
August 19th, securing your WordPress website with WP Durham is happening. That's out in that's at Durham, but I think it's probably going to be a um, um, it's probably going to be a virtual meetup. Yeah, it's an online event. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, that actually already occurred. Let me just see here. Uh, so the next meetup is actually August 18th. That's this, this meetup here. Uh, and, uh, you can check, um, on this website, any kind of, um, um, meetups that occur. We do have some, uh, several other organizations, um, that are like not in Toronto per se, but that also run meetups. So um, if you're interested, you can check those out as well. Jock, Jock, do you have a plug for an upcoming meetup that you're going to be running? You're still there, Jock? I don't think he's here. I don't think he's here anymore. Um, okay. All right, folks. Thank you for your time. We'll go ahead and finish up. Thank, thank you, you very much. This was very helpful. Good. I'm glad you found that. Thank Thanks you. For, thanks for coming. Thanks everyone for their help.